Bristol Community College, Mathematics with Dan Avedikian, Math 131, Elements of College Mathematics, Section 2.5, Problem 4. This is problem number 4 of Section 2.5. It says find the inverse of the matrix 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. So this is a bigger matrix. We have three rows in this matrix. It's bigger than the ones in the previous problems, but we're going to solve it with the same exact method. We're going to make a double matrix with the matrix they gave us as the left half of the double matrix. We're going to write an identity matrix as the right half of the double matrix. And we're just going to solve the one on the left. The one on the right will turn into the inverse. And this one, even though it's bigger, this is going to be a fairly easy one, as you'll see when we solve it. So we're going to start with writing the given matrix as the left half of a double matrix. So the top row is 0, 0, 1. The middle row is 0, 1, 0. And the bottom row is 1, 0, 0. So that's the left matrix of a double matrix. So right next to it, we're going to put an identity matrix of the same size. So we're going to need the one with three rows and three columns. The top row of the right half of our double matrix is going to be 1, 0, 0. The middle row of our double matrix will be 0, 1, 0. And the bottom row of our double matrix will be 0, 0, 1. So that gives us a really big wide matrix. The top row is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. The middle row is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And the bottom row is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's a big matrix. Now what we have to do is do whatever steps we need to to solve the left half matrix to turn it into an identity matrix. And what's going to happen is, as we apply those steps, the matrix on the right half of the double matrix will turn into the inverse. Well, in this particular case, when we concentrate on the matrix on the left half, and you think of where the ones and zeros have to go, and again, don't pay attention to the right half matrix initially. We'll just see what it turns into. When you're looking at the left half matrix, if I just bring row 3 up to the top and row 1 down to the bottom, it will become an identity matrix. So let's write the next matrix. And it winds up solving in just one step. All I have to do is next to it, I'll write swap R1, R3. I'm going to swap the top row and bottom row, leave the middle row right where it is. So this bottom row will come up to the top in my new matrix. So the top row of my new matrix will be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. The middle row can stay exactly the way it is. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And now in the new matrix, the bottom row is going to be what was the top row in the first matrix. So the, my new bottom row is going to be 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So I have swapped row 1 and row 3. And by doing that, the matrix on the left has become an identity matrix. It's got all the ones and zeros in the right spot. And now the matrix on the right half of our double matrix is the inverse. So off to the side, let me write A inverse. And again, the notation looks like A to the negative 1 power, but it's really read A inverse, equals the matrix on the right half of our double matrix. So the top row of that is 0, 0, 1. The middle row is 0, 1, 0. And the bottom row is 1, 0, 0. That's the inverse. Now what makes this an unusual case is the given matrix is its own inverse. That's very unusual. But it is the case that is the right answer in this case. This matrix is the inverse of the one in the question.